Back in 2010, I quit my corporate job to stay home with my first son. And I fell into this world of blogging. I started blogging, I started wanting the blog, I started all the things, and I fell down a rabbit hole every time I Googled how to start a blog or how to do this with a blog, or how to do that with a blog. So if that is you, you're wondering how to start a blog, you're wondering like what the first steps are, this is the video for you. And we're gonna get into it in just a second. Hey, howdy, hey, my name is Jessica Stansberry and I am pumped that you are here. On this channel, I give you the tips and tricks and tools that I have used personally to create a life on purpose, to live life by design and to live life on my own terms because I don't like rules. Just saying. If that sounds like something you are interested in, make sure you hit the big red subscribe button below this video and come back every single week for more tips and tricks to do just that. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I started blogging way back in the day in 2010 when my first son was born. I actually quit my job to stay home with him because I really wanted to be home with my baby. And in the process, I kind of learned what blogging was. I fell down a rabbit hole of, of all the things that had to do with blogging. What did you need? How did you do it? How did you make money? All of it. And it's really interesting because back in that day, there was no information on the internet that taught anybody how to start a blog. And it was very hard to find like one, two, three, four, these are the things you need to start a blog right now. So as I've grown and as I've grown my business, as I've grown my online presence, I've continued to blog throughout the years. It just looks different. So in those beginning days, I was blogging as like a mommy blogger. I had no intentions to make money with it. I had no anything. It was just kind of like my creative outlet and a fun thing to do. Then I kind of morphed through the years. I've started blogs for my businesses. I have blogged for um, teaching you guys things here on YouTube. All the blogs have happened over here in the Hey Jessica HQ. And it's pretty standard across whatever reason you want to start a blog. Like whether you want to be a mommy blogger, whether you want to start a blog for your business, whether you want to start a blog about that awesome hobby that you have, it doesn't really matter. All bloggers really need the same few things to get started. So today I'm going to give you those things that you need absolutely hands down, regardless of your category of blog to really get started with blogging. Okay. So in full disclosure, some of these things are tactical, tangible, like things that you need. And some of them are strategies. So on that note, let me start first with a strategy that every single blog needs. And this goes for business. This goes for whatever you're wanting to start a blog for. Now, if you are starting a blog with no intention to ever make it any kind of income generating anything, or you never want to make it a business or any of that, first of all, awesome. Second of all, though, blogging is a lot of work. It's a lot more work than you think it is. So if that is the case, I'm not sure that this is the right creative avenue for you. Maybe you want to just start an Instagram account or just start a YouTube channel. But if you go full in on blogging, it's a lot of work to one, get it started and two, be consistent enough to actually pick up traction. So you want to be real like in it. Um, and on that note, to be in it, to make money, to really take off, to have a following, you need a niche. Now you may say that niche. I do not. I am not fancy like that. I say niche, but you need a niche that goes with anything with business, with blogging, with whatever you have to be niched down to be able to find the right category of people who want to follow you. Now, let me also say, as someone who has been in this industry for a very long time, I have seen myself do it. I have seen other people do it. Once you have niched down and kind of gotten a following, you can then start to broaden out. So if you're like, oh, I don't just want to niche and be this type of blogger um, or this type of blogger or whatever, because it feels constricting to you, if you will hang tight and do it for a little while, you can then start niching out. So. At first though, you need a niche. Are you going to be the baking mama blogger? Are you going to be 
um, the hot mess mama blogger? Are you going to be um, the blogger who talks about blogging? Are you going to be the blogger who talks about Instagram? Are you going to be a fashion blogger? Like where, where is your special niche in the world? And again, you can take that a little broader and a little broader as you grow an audience. But to really grow an audience, you need to be really niche specific and have people find you because they're looking for specific things. Then they come into your ecosystem, they learn to love you, and then you can kind of start branching out a little bit. Okay, so first thing you need to start a blog is a niche. Second thing you need, also a strategy, is a consistent posting schedule. Now, with YouTube, as with basically anything in this life, social media, business, podcasting, YouTubing, blogging, <laughs> whatever, um, and I might have just said with YouTube a second ago instead of with blogging, but you know what I meant you have to be consistent. You will not make it very far. You will not see success. You will not have people coming and finding your blog if you are not consistent. And there's a lot of reasons why. One, the most important thing is that when you're consistent, it proves that you are consistent to the people coming over. So if they see that you've blogged every single week on Tuesday for the last six years, then they're going to want to follow you because they know that consistently you're going to show up and give them the things that they want. So it's building a trust and a rapport with your readers or um, followers or whatever you want to call them. Now, the other piece of this is with a blog, a big part of strategy is SEO. And if you don't know what SEO is, it's search engine optimization. It is what Google uses to be able to show your blog in search results. So if someone is searching for how to start a blog, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make sure that my content is what is found um, if that is possible. Okay. So we can't make our content be what's found. We can't rig the system. It is totally up to Google. However, there are some things you can do to make that your chance is better. And one of those things is that Google likes consistency. So if they see that you are consistently blogging once a week for, you know, a couple of months, and then you release a, um, a blog post that hits on a key term and your blog has been consistent and this other blog hasn't, they're going to show your content above this other blog's content. So not only does it build rapport with your readers um, or your followers, but it also shows Google that you're serious and you're in this for them to be able to show your content. As far as building rapport with your readers, the way I always reference this is think about something like a TV show. You know, you start watching a TV show and you're like, oh my goodness, I love this show so much. And then, then they're like, well, the next episode, we'll just release whenever we feel like it. You're not going to hang around and pay attention to when that next episode releases. But if they say every Tuesday at nine on CBS, <laughs> you're gonna be there every Tuesday at nine on CBS. So it's the same with your blog. All right, the next three things I have for you are more systems and um, tactical, tangible things than they are strategies. And the first of those is you need a way to blog. <laughs> you need a website. Um, and the best website, and I'm telling you this from years and years and years and years and years and years of experience in the blogging world, in the SEO world, in all the things. I started as a blog designer. I have done all the things, I promise, coming from someone with a lot of experience. <laughs> the best platform you can use to blog is WordPress. Now, WordPress for whatever reason, likes to confuse people. And if you Google or if you go to wordpress.com, you're going to find some like free blogging platform that you do not want. What you want is you want a hosting account and you want to install WordPress on it and you want to install a WordPress design. Now, the way I explain this is that your hosting account is like the um, gas in your car. So where like the website is your car, right? It's all the pretty bells and whistles. And when you go to someone's website, you see that they have like automatic windows and their car is purple and all the things. But that website wouldn't be running without the gas behind it. And that's what your hosting is. And then WordPress is kind of the, the look of the site and the way it works. So when you go to a website and it works a certain way, um, and it does certain things and it looks a certain way, that's because they have a certain WordPress theme installed. Now, that being said, there are other options besides WordPress that you can use. Um, probably the most common one in the blogging world other than WordPress would be Squarespace. 
Again, not my favorite because of the SEO benefits that WordPress has over Squarespace, but WordPress, I will say, is a little harder to set up. So I would highly recommend either doing a lot of research, figuring out what this looks like for you. I have a lot of videos on my channel. I'll try and link them below um, on like what WordPress is, how to set it up, all those things. They're kind of old, fair warning, but they're there. Do a lot of research and get that done or hire someone to set up your blog for you because then it'll be done right and you won't have to think about it again. But you do need a place to blog. Those free blogging services like Blogspot, if that's still a thing, Blogger, that was a thing back in the day, um, the free WordPress, all of those, they're okay um, and that they might be a good place to get started, but they are not going to take you further and further and further along. And again, the same with Squarespace. If you really feel overwhelmed by WordPress, I would highly recommend Squarespace over any of the other options. Um, but if you can get in on the WordPress floor, I would. All right, number four on how to get started with blogging is that you need to go ahead and get set up with affiliates that you can. Now, I've done a lot of videos on affiliate marketing in the past, and a couple of them will be popping across the screen here as I talk about it, but then the rest of them will be linked below in a playlist. But bloggers make their money from affiliates, sponsored sponsorships, and ads is really like what it comes down to. So if you are starting to blog, there is no reason why you shouldn't be going ahead and getting what affiliate accounts you can approved so you can include those in your blog post. For instance, let's say one of your blog posts is going to be about how to potty train your kids. And that is something that you love to talk about and you wanna write a whole blog post about it. And you used a certain type of, I don't know, sheets or <laughs> reward system or stickers or something from Amazon. If you're set up as an Amazon affiliate, you can go ahead and link those in, even though you have nobody following your blog right now. The really powerful part of this is you're probably not gonna make a lot of money up front because you're brand new. But let's say that post goes viral, or let's say in two years you have built up a following and then they're coming to you for new content, but they always reference back to that old content. That blog post could be making you money for years and years and years to come. So if you will go ahead and get set up with what affiliates you can get set up with, it's going to put you ahead of the game. Amazon is the natural first step, but there are tons of others that you can do as well. And again, I will link videos above and below on affiliate marketing because it can be hard to understand exactly where to get started there and, and like what companies you should reach out to and all the things. So if you're wanting to know more about that, there's, there's videos. They, po they pop in round. Just saying. Okay, the fifth and final thing that I think you need to have to get started with a blog is you need to go ahead and set up have it ready, your Google Analytics. Now, this one seems like a weird one and it's probably not one that anybody else is telling you you need to have to start a blog, but it's imperative because again, going back to me saying, most people who start a blog want to make money from it, right? If you don't know the numbers behind your business, if you don't know like how many people are coming to your website or how they're getting there or what social media platform is sending them the most or what links they're clicking on the most, it's going to be really hard for you to approach sponsorship deals or to approach partnerships within your blog to then make the money. So it's a really good thing to have and you're going to need it later on down the road. And right now is the perfect time to install it and get it set up because you don't have any traffic and it's not hindering anything. Let's say that in six months, one of your posts goes viral on Pinterest or something and you have all this traffic that is coming to your website. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I can see in like WordPress that there's like 100,000 people coming to my site and you go and you go to get set up with some affiliate or some sponsorship deal or even an ad network and you go to set up with them and they're like, we need proof that you are getting this many viewers. Can you add us to your Google Analytics account? Because that's what they ask for or they ask for a report and you can't and then you have to wait a whole nother month to get set up with them, it could really be costing you some money. So go ahead and get it set up now. I'm gonna recap the five things I talked about because I think they're all so, so, so important. Obviously, there's more things that you need when starting a blog. You need to be present on social media nowadays. Used to, you could start a blog and just be a blogger. Now we need to have the social medias, but 
that's a blog or a YouTube video <laughs> for a different day. So essentially you need a niche, you need a thing that you're gonna be known for at least for a little while. You need a consistent posting strategy. You need a way to blog slash website. You need to go ahead and get set up with affiliates and you need to go ahead and set up your Google Analytics account so that you're all squared away when it is time to make more money. If you have any questions or comments or anything to add to this, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. And again, until next time, make sure you hit subscribe because I don't want you to miss any other tips and tricks with me each week. Bye y'all.